All right, let's look at one of the tools that a lot of people uh, use in SQL Server and may need, depending on the situation, and that is the tool of with no lock. And you can get into a lot of debates about with no lock with uh, with individuals. One of my favorite examples of this was at an organization I was at a, a couple of years ago. They actually fired an individual because they did a count star on the table, and they didn't do a with no lock on it. And the transaction ran for a couple of minutes, and I thought it was one of those examples that I thought that's just kind of a dumb reason to to let someone go. This wasn't the smartest thing that they did, but I've seen people make bigger mistakes and kept their job. So anyway, it was just one of those situations where it's like that was not the smartest thing to do for the developer, of course, but it wasn't the, the smartest thing to do to just let him go for that. So essentially with no lock is a read uncommitted uh, uncommitted transaction. So if you imagine a transaction of 10,000 records uh, that's occurring, you know, you have begin tran, you insert the 10,000 and then you commit the transaction, it's essentially reading um, the uncommitted data. You do have to be careful about this uh, because, of course, you can get inaccurate information. One of my favorite examples of this was uh, there was a, a insert that was 170 million plus records and I was watching the uh, the data flow and saw it go up, you know, from 100 to 120 to 130 to 140, etc. But the whole transaction got canceled, and so whoosh, right back down to zero. And that was a perfect example of where um, you know, not getting the latest information can sometimes uh, be inaccurate, depending on what what you're needing to do. So uh, definitely. Keep that in mind. Uh, remember, with the locks, uh, the with no lock creates a shared lock. Uh, the other thing too, as well, is that if a schema change is occurring, it's going to be blocked. It doesn't matter whether you're using with not with no lock or not. It's going to be blocked anyway. Um, if data change frequently and reporting up to the second information is a high priority, no lock may return the incorrect data values. That's a very important point to make. If you have a, let's say, a simulated transaction application that simulates a transaction through your process, it may not be that big of a deal if you use with no lock or not, because all you're doing is seeing if the transaction made it through. But if you're doing some type of production process where you're doing a check or you're doing a data audit, you have to realize with no lock may be very imprecise. Okay, so you do have to think about those things. Um, with no lock is is very useful in my opinion for like a light check or to just retrieve information if it's not the latest for just general patterns. So if I need to, let's say, just verify that a couple hours ago something occurred, I'm going to use with no lock, especially on a production process, because it's not really that important um, whether I check that or not. It's kind of a very light, a light read, if you would, in the sense that, nah, I mean, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. But if it's high priority, if it's I need to get the latest data, then you definitely want to make sure that you use something along the lines of, um, you know, actually performing a lock on the table. Of course, you're going to have to be careful because, like, for instance, many of you know, if you work in an OLTP environment, you can't just go in and lock tables. You just, it's not going to happen. So then you have to kind of think about how you're going to read from the data. And whatnot. That's why one of the reasons the appeals of the read-only secondaries and availability groups is so that you can read those and you don't disrupt uh, the others. Okay, so um, there are some a few misconceptions I would say about with no lock or or not using with no lock when you're tracking just the the measure of data flow, for instance, in like ETL. Keep in mind that if you do choose not to use with no locks you want to read the latest data the check that you're doing can actually cause data disruptions data interruptions okay so if you want to verify if something has gone from one to the other and the flow is continuing then you need to be careful about what type of check you're doing if you're not using something like with no lock or if you're not reading from the properties okay so a good example of that is if the load time hasn't finished and you're going to go in and do a hard read 
uh, that's what I call them as a hard read, then what's going to occur is you may end up disrupting the data flow that's occurring. So if this is, let's say, the extract and you're pulling data into it and you know that the file has 100 million records, that's going to go from this to the table. And you do a hard read on that table and it's going to actually have to wait, let's say, several minutes. You might be blocking part of that extract process. So be careful about that because uh, many people I've seen do this and they don't realize that what they're doing is they're disrupting the data flow. And if you disrupt the data flow, not only are you getting imprecise information, for instance, if you're doing it during the load time, well, you're guaranteeing that it's blocking. So you're going to prevent what's going to happen as far as you're going to report information that, oh, we don't have the full 100 million plus records. Yeah, but you were blocking it to get that information. So got to be careful about that. With no lock can be a very useful tool to use in some situations, but it can definitely, definitely, I agree with it's been gone who says it's it's overused in a lot of companies because they just flat out don't understand uh, what they're doing, and that's very true.